Hello and welcome back to Will It Work. Today we're going to take a look at this Brother word processor from the mid-90s and see if we can upgrade its storage media to something a little more sexier than a floppy disk drive. So just a little bit of quick history. These word processors were popular in the 80s to the mid-90s. PCs used to be a lot more expensive than they are now, and so if you were really just looking to write, these were a viable alternative to buying a full PC with a printer. Most of them had floppy disk drives in them. Back in the 80s, they would have had five and a quarter or quick disk. Uh, later models would adopt three and a half inch standard. Uh, some of them with a proprietary uh, one-sided 240 kilobyte format, uh, sometimes just pure 720K. And then by the mid 90s, very proudly saying 1.44 megabytes, MS-DOS compatible. Take it out of here and put it in your PC and you can translate your document into Microsoft Word or WordPerfect or other uh, computer-based word processors of the time. Now, occasionally these word processors might have a port on them. Most of them had an external VGA monitor, um, at least until the, like the mid-90s when these big LCD screens came in. Uh, occasionally you'd see one with a serial port or a modem port that could be used as a terminal but for the most part they didn't have much on them. And this model here, the WP1700MDS, which I believe came out in 94, is very streamlined. It has absolutely nothing on it at all. It just has the floppy disk drive. It doesn't even have a external VGA port. I mean there's nothing on here. Let's take a look at the side here. There's the on-off switch, nothing else. Nothing on the back. And no ports here on the side. So, it's going to be interesting to try to add something to a portless, unexpandable word processor. But we're going to try. So one of my favorite forms of storage is magneto-optical disk. And that's what we're going to attempt to connect to the Brother word processor here today. So I have this Magneto optical drive from Olympus. And it connects via USB. Now how in the world are we going to attach this to the word processor? Well, I guess we're just going to have to do something about it. Whoa, what is this? A USB port on the word processor? Okay. Let me back up a little bit and explain to you what I've done here. Okay, so this is a GoTech floppy drive emulator, and you would replace an actual PC 1.4 megabyte floppy disk drive with this. Now, while you could put this into a computer, it was primarily designed for non-computer devices that happen to use a floppy disk drive for their storage solution. This could be like a word processor, of course, a grand piano, a synthesizer, uh, MIDI equipment, embroidery machines, loom machines, and even CNC machines. Some of these things are very expensive, big investment in them. They're not particularly obsolete today, except for the floppy disk drive. So what you would do here is you'd put the GoTech drive in, and you could plug in a USB flash drive. And using this device or some special Windows software, you could format the flash disk into hundreds of little 1.4 megabyte partitions, each representing a floppy disk. So like if you had an embroidery machine and you had hundreds of patterns on hundreds of floppy disks, you could have them all right here and you could cycle through them with these two button selectors. Now, everything I've ever seen on this, every demonstration of it, every article has always had a flash drive in it. And I knew that more USB mass storage devices than a flash drive would work with this. But what I wasn't prepared for was just how picky this device is. So before we get to the main event, let's talk a little bit about what works and what doesn't work with the GoTech floppy drive emulator. Okay, so let's start with the devices on the left compact flash cards and SD cards through a USB adapter work perfectly fine. No surprise there, they're not that much different from a flash drive. This is a one terabyte mechanical USB bus powered hard drive and that worked perfectly fine as well and had no issues with it whatsoever. Over here on the right I've got a bus powered zip drive, absolutely no engagement from the GoTech drive, even when I brought in external power. It just didn't like it at all. Didn't want anything to do with it. Down here, Jazz Drive. It has an AC adapter, of course, 
and a SCSI to USB cable, which works with just about everything I've ever thrown at it. No engagement, could not get it to work with a GoTech drive. It is possible that the cable's not the problem. Maybe it just doesn't like the Jazz drive, but unfortunately I don't have any other SCSI devices right now to test that with. But either way, the Jazz drive's out. Both of these, if I plugged them into Windows and used that special formatting software for the GoTech drive, it sees them, it formats them fine, bring them over to the actual device, still no engagement. These two guys are out. Last thing over here is my DVD burner. Uh, Longtime viewers of my channel know I love DVD RAM, which is a special kind of DVD that otherwise works like a regular hard disk. And I got absolutely nowhere with that. Uh, this had to have external power because it's USB 3. Uh, but just would not engage with it at all and the Windows software wouldn't even see it wouldn't even try to format it and there's yet another reason why DVD RAM wouldn't work which we'll get to in a little bit okay so let's move on to the Magneto optical drive and I'll tell you about all of the problems I had with that okay so before I begin on this part I do want to mention there is an upgrade you can get for the GoTech drives it's called flash floppy you can do it yourself if you have the right equipment or you can purchase it pre-upgraded and it's pretty cool it allows you to attach it to other kinds of computers besides PCs things like Amiga computers and Atari computers you can also put a little OLED display screen on here that gives you the disk partition name and a round dial that you can turn and move through the uh, disk partitions faster it's pretty neat uh, however in everything I've read about it, it I've never seen anything any of the release notes on the firmware or anything where it's increasing the different types of USB mass storage devices you could put into it. So while it's really cool, I am aware of it, but it's not going to make any difference in this video. I just wanted to point that out real fast because I think people jump and say, have you tried fast floppy? And yes, I know about it, but it's not going to change anything with this video. So anyway, I decided to use Magneto Optical Disc when DVD RAM didn't work. It's my next favorite media. And it uses a combination of magnetism and laser optics to write data and a laser only to read it back. Much more popular in Japan and usually when you buy these three and a half inch magneto optical drives, you're going to be getting them out of Japan. Once in a while you'll find one for sale here in America, but uh, most of the time it's in Japan. And that's where I got this one here. It is an Olympus drive, 640 megabyte maximum disk all the way down to the smallest sizes. And I had one of these drives, uh, one of these Fujitsu drives a few years ago, and I did a video on it with the iPhone, and I sold it after that video, and I kind of regretted it. I always wanted to get one back in, so when I went on eBay, I, I couldn't find that one, but I found the Olympus one, and the price was right, and I brought it in from Japan, and I got a new uh, unopened five-pack of 640 megabyte magneto optical disc. So I plug it into the GoTech drive, and it fires right up. I'm like, great, this is going to work. Just like the zip drive was dead, this one fires up. But I couldn't format it in the device. It wouldn't work. So I took it over to uh, Windows and used that special formatting software. And while it saw the disk itself, when I tried to format it, it said, hey, um, yeah, I can't format this because the sector byte size is 2048 kilobytes and it needs to be 512 kilobytes. I'm like, what? So I did a little research and it turns out that optical media like CD-ROM and DVD-ROM use the 2048 kilobyte sector size and most magnetic media like hard disks and so forth used 512. I'm like, great. Well, I guess we're not gonna be able to use magneto optical disks. And to make matters worse, this Olympus drive wouldn't work with my iPhone like the old Fujitsu one I had years ago did. So I sold it on eBay and I finally found the Fujitsu model I'd had years ago. Now I've painted it black. If you saw my last video, I painted it black to make it look like a Next accessory. But this is it right here. And while it was coming in and the other one I'd sold, I came across an article about magneto optical discs that went into detail about that sector byte size. And it said starting with the 640 megabyte disc, they switched to 2048 kilobytes and all the smaller capacity discs were 512. I'm like, are you kidding me? I just had the wrong disc the whole time. So I go out and get a five pack of Sony 230 megabyte magneto optical discs. And my Fujitsu drive comes in and guess what? I plug it into the GoTech drive and it doesn't work. It doesn't fire up. I'm like, are you kidding me? These come in, 
I am able to format them with that Windows software, so I confirmed the 512 issue was fine with them. Still put it in here, nothing, no engagement. It does work with the iPhone, like I remembered, but it doesn't work with the GoTech drive. So I'm like, man, and I couldn't find this model on eBay. And I didn't want to play whack-a-mole and get different ones in and try and figure out which one works and which one doesn't. So I emailed the guy I sold this to, and I said, I know this sounds a little weird, but would you mind selling that back to me? Because it turns out I really need it. I'm not kidding you, he wrote me back within five minutes. He said, sure, I'd be happy to. I just need to get some data off an old disk. I don't need the drive anymore. So I was like, perfect. Uh, I just had him do a, an exchange, a refund or whatever, and it came back to me. So now I have the right drive and I have the right disk. Let's see if we can finally make this work with the Brother Word processor. Okay, so I've got the Magneto optical drive here. Now, before I even had the word processor, I had the GoTech drive attached to my computer. And in that setup, it was generating enough current out of the USB port to power the Magneto optical drive. However, once I moved it into the word processor, not as much current is coming out and the drive is not able to function properly on just the power coming out of the GoTech drive now. So what I've done here is just simply attach the AC adapter in the back so we have a good consistent experience. Now I'm going to show you how to format a disk using the GoTech drive itself. We'll go ahead and plug it in here. And what you do is you hold down the two disk selector buttons and power it on and that puts it into format mode. So let's do that right now. And there it goes. Now look at the final number it gets to. 144 1.44 megabyte partitions. I swear that's just a coincidence. It's just the math when using a 230 megabyte disk. Okay, so the disks start out at 000 and work their way up to 999 if you have the space, so a thousand potential ones if you have a disk that's large enough. We have 144 here. So we're in the initial disk, 000. I'm going to open up the word processor. There's nothing on the disk right now. Of course, it's freshly formatted. So let's do a new file. And I'll type, this is a test of magneto optical disk zero 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 period and then we will save that it wants a name so let's just call it test zero 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 you should see some activity light here on the magneto optical drive that's good looks like it's saved let's move on to disk zero zero one this would be the equivalent of ejecting the floppy disk and putting a new one in. The browser will refresh. Nothing on this disk. Let's do a new file. This is a test of Magneto Optical Disk 001. You should be seeing me under disk 000. I'll explain that in a minute. So let's save that. We'll give it a name. We'll call it test 001. Should see the activity light on the uh, magneto optical drive again. All right. Let's go back to disk 000. And there is the test 000 document we wrote. We'll go ahead and open that up. There we go. This is a test of MO disk 000. Now what's really cool about this screen on this word processor is that even though it's not really long, it can actually be split into a dual screen so you can compare two different documents simultaneously. So let's do that now. 
I'm going to pull up the uh, dual screen here. It'll split the screen in half, and on the bottom, the file browser will refresh. Let's go to disk 001. And there is the document test 001. And it should pull up both of them now. Okay, so the bottom says this is a test of MO disk 001. You should be seeing me under disk 000. So there you go. We have successfully wrote two different documents and saved them to two different partitions on the magneto optical disk, and we could even go back and retrieve them and view them at the same time. Okay, so the GoTek floppy drive emulator works perfectly in this Brother Word processor. If you have the right magneto optical drive, and that's the real trick, and you have the right magneto optical disk, that of being less than 640 megabytes, then you can use a magneto optical drive in conjunction with the GoTek floppy emulator on the device of your choice. Anyway, that's going to do it for now. I hope you're enjoying these videos. If you are, please like and subscribe. I'll be back soon, but that's all for now. Take care.